I'm here in Utah at the Mudbots headquarters with CEO James Lyman, finally. For my longtime subscribers, you might remember an earlier video I did referencing Mudbots, but I have to say, I really knew nothing about the industry back then. That was almost three years ago, and now that I've learned so much more, James has invited me to take a tour through his facility and see the things that they've been working on. As it turns out, we didn't know anything three years ago either. <laughs> we thought we did. Well, welcome to Mudbots. Uh, we're approaching our fifth year right now. Uh, we've moved a few times. We'll be moving again here in just uh, about eight months. Keeps growing, keeps expanding. Feels very, very cramped, very small. Why don't I uh, follow you inside with the camera and give us a quick tour? You bet, come on in. But first, I have to announce that I've just launched the beta version of the How to 3D Print a House course. It's in a beta version because I built it myself on my own website. But you can sign up now at discounted beta pricing and help me iron out some of the kinks and figure out the best way to share the knowledge I've gained in the 3D printed construction industry. I've already started making improvements to the course and I'm going to update it frequently whenever issues arise. Each update will come with price increases until I'm completely satisfied with the quality of the course and then we'll be at the full price. Sign up for the course at the link in the description below. Let me know if you run into any issues and I'll get back to you immediately. So we have three different companies here. Uh, we have CJR Tech, which is an automation company. We have uh, USA Botics, which is uh, another automation company that uh, automates factories. So, and then of course Mudbots. Come on in. Uh, this is the place, uh, reception area. These are our six axis robots, our four axis robots. Our classroom, classroom training area. This is some of our smaller stuff that uh, landscapers, tool companies, monument letters, just uh, so it's, it's a lot of our earlier stuff. This here, if you look at it, you'll see uh, our main emphasis from day one was very, very consistent layers and printing without stopping. So a lot of chemistry, a lot of uh, sensors. None of the over-the-counter, off-the-shelf stuff ended up working. Uh, so we, uh, Kyle's our software engineer. He's, uh, he makes lots of these. I have no idea what they're for, but uh, they, uh, they make it possible. So yeah, if you look down inside of this, you'll see uh, just the, the consistency of print, and then of course this one here was finished. This is, all, all the stuff you're seeing here was done by training groups, people that have come to train. Uh, shoot, that was one of our very, very first videos a long time ago, and it said real-time finishing. I had no idea back then what real-time finishing was gonna become. Yeah, a lot of fun stuff. M for Mudbots. What's that? M for Mudbots, I guess. Yeah, in any font. <laughs> no forms. So here's uh, some of our, for our fencing contractors, fencing that we have. Uh, we put uh, fiber optic lights in it. You can do it in a house. You can do it uh, top of a pool, master bedroom, living Premium room. Premium finisher. Anything, yeah, anything you just wanted to do. And so we do these. Uh, well, we have contractors that do these in sections. They can be picked up, taken to the site, and just stack. High slump wall. Uh, and just as we're doing things, we're like, wow, that, that's kind of a cool look. Uh, you know, it's not what you're not used to seeing. Usually you see smoother lines or whatever else, but we had people that are like, I really like the look of this. It gets that uh, little bit of a breaking effect on each one of the passes. Are you making your own material here? What do you mean material? The material you print with. Going clear back to the very beginning, uh, as we looked at uh, the idea of a proprietary mix, we would have liked to have, uh, to sell the mix. It's a way to create revenue on every single job being done across the country, but we knew shipping was gonna be a problem. Later on we discovered that 
a proprietary mix, at least for us, wasn't going to work because we needed a mix that would change as temperature changed, humidity changed. You're not changing. You can't keep going up. It'll be too, it'll, it'll fall, fall over basically. So from day one with us, uh, we decided a proprietary mix wasn't in our cards, and which meant we had to develop a system that would. Uh, meter every single one of the ingredients, our liquid and our uh, powdered ingredients, and allow us to change those ingredients and the formulas of those, those ingre ingredients for every single batch. So, In many ways, printing an object like this is harder than a house because you have such a tiny layer time, so you need to be buildable within a minute or two minutes mm -hmm. versus having 10 to 15 minutes per layer. That, that, that's what our that's what all of the, our motion controllers and our sensors uh, in our mixes is looking at. Uh, but you're absolutely right. To print something smaller like this, our, we have to be curing much, much faster or we can't keep going up to eight feet. And we knew from the very beginning we had to have a system. If it was going to be faster, cheaper, better, we had to have a system that was curing at different rates throughout the day. Uh, especially for your outdoor printing. Yeah, bigger prints, easier than smaller prints. I can tell you that. Cool. One of the easiest ways for people to get their head wrapped around concrete printing, because people get excited about it, they drink the Kool-Aid, and then immediately they start wondering, well, is it gonna pass code or whatever else? Essentially, concrete printing passes code anywhere in the world, especially any place that understands uh, ICF. ICF is built of these styrofoam blocks. They stack like Legos. And then while they're going up, you have, you have your horizontal rebar and rebar bridges. So if you think of concrete printing like this right here, okay, as printing both sides of this styrofoam wall, running your rebar in it, filling it solid full of concrete, it passes code everywhere. The difference is we're not printing with uh, material that, okay, you can do this. We're printing three times the strength of a cinder block. If you think of it as ICF, we're printing both sides of the wall. Uh, we're putting electrical, plumbing, rebar, reinforcement inside the wall. It gets poured solid with concrete. Uh, that helps people start to go down that, that path of understanding how this process is done. Ideally, you don't want concrete poured in the middle, though, because if this was a printed wall with concrete in the middle, eight inches wide, you only have R3. R3 is going to cut it any place. So, I mean, you want an R25, R30 wall, so we teach our customers different types of insulation methods and building methods that allow them to not have this poured solid with concrete and still pass code. But it's a starting place. This is a training piece that all of our uh, customers have to do. Uh, we're literally finishing the outside of the wall as we go, all the way up. Our exterior requires no finishing whatsoever, no plaster, no, nothing on the exterior. We have a myriad of different designs, uh, similar to uh, a basket weave. We call this a, a bubble print. We've been showing it for quite a while now. Uh, and then we finish the wall smooth while we're printing uh, clear up to eight feet. So at the end of a day, one day, uh, your walls won't be textured. They won't have texture on them like this here, but they will be smooth and ready for texture the very next day. And then just spray top coat it on it the same way that they would drywall. But we don't have to fur out the walls. We don't have to plaster the walls. So what's behind this door in here? The number one component of what we do is our training. We have a month of pre-training with videos. You come here, you print every single day. Um, we start you on know, small prints, you work your way up to big prints. They don't leave here uh, until they've printed 15 different prints and uh, the, the last thing they have to print is something that's 400 square foot. Uh, they put the electrical in the wall while they're printing. You see the Romex going in right now. The boxes went in. We don't stop. They're not allowed to stop. During our training, we do things like disconnect their power. You got five minutes to fix any problem you have. And if you can't get back, you're going to end up with a cold joint, which is uh, Satan around here. We don't allow it. So 
if we don't watch them fail over and over and do things like changing, changing their mix, disconnecting their power, uh, changing temperature of water, until they have experienced these things, uh, they won't know what to do when they go, go home with the printer. You got five minutes to fix any kind of problem you have, no matter what goes wrong, and that's what we train here. It's like NASCAR training. We'll, we'll put a piece of gravel, okay? A one inch piece of gravel that'll go down through the auger, gets into the stator, boom, done. We teach dual redundancy. Our customer, our systems are complete. Uh, mixers, hoppers, everything you need. Uh, but we teach dual redundancy, two mixers, two hose, another hose just sitting right there with fittings, um, a separate pump. You know, our pump's like uh, $7,800. Uh, so we make the components affordable so that no matter what happens, you can fix it. If I got a, we call it NASCAR training when the guys come in and the first couple days they're here, we have them take apart a pump and put it back together. And then we let them compete and we give away some cash to whoever ends up winning and whoever's the fastest. When they do that the very first time, it's 15 minutes. By the time they're done, they can tear that apart and put it back together in two minutes. So uh, they just gotta do it over and over and over. We cannot let customers buy our printers and go out and print crap. If they do, they ruin the reputation of BudBots. They ruin the marketability of our existing customers. Our customers after training still got to go home and print every other day for two or three months until we certify them. So not only do they print this while they're here, then they have to go home and print it again in secret. And when we come out, we're looking at the quality of the print. We have very strict standards and fines. If anybody prints something that's not within our standards, uh, and those are spelled out, uh, they can be fined by the company. So the, it's not just the new customer, it's the existing customers that stand to be damaged by somebody going out and doing something embarrassing or printing something that looks like crap. I mean, you, you can't get rid of that. You'll be explaining that forever and ever and ever. So our existing customers have a vested interest in making sure that people are trained properly the right print crew uh, so that they can print a consistent, perfect product, zero to eight feet without stopping. And uh, that's what the brand is built on. Just don't stop. Quick assembly, print to eight feet in eight hours, uh, take down, head to the next job. Or uh, if you're done, push the printer over because our printer's on wheels. We push it to the next spot, 50 feet away, and we print again, and over and over and over. So, so 